Hello and welcome back to 365 Days with MXM Tune. I'm Maya, a singer, songwriter, video maker, Oakland native, and a bookworm. I'm also a huge fan of history. I love untold stories, gross facts, hidden secrets, anything weird, dark, and funky from the past. Each day I'm going to share one of my favorite deep cuts with you, so let's take a look at today's stories. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff, no, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's 365. Today in 1949, the English writer George Orwell published the novel 1984. Now, the novel is a staple in the literary canon and a classic embodiment of political dystopian fiction. The novel follows a man named Winston Smith, who lives in a world destroyed by international conflict. Now, three authoritarian superstates rule the world. Winston lives in Oceania, where he works for the Ministry of Truth, rewriting historical records to match the ever-evolving narrative the government is pushing. Big Brother is the ultimate authority, and he's constantly watching through an elaborate surveillance system. Spoiler alert, but let's just say that 1984 doesn't have a happy ending. 1984 serves as Orwell's warning for what might happen to us if we become too complacent. As misinformation in the news becomes more common, Winston's experience with constantly shifting narratives in the Ministry of Truth reminds us that we can't believe everything we read on the internet. And also, we should read entire articles, not just headlines we scroll past on Twitter. There's a surprising number of moments in 1984 that seem like they wouldn't be real, but are more real than we'd like to think. In 1936, Orwell went on a research trip in Spain around the time of the Spanish Civil War and stayed at an apartment sponsored by the local Communist Party, which put him on a government watch list, but he was probably listed under his real name, Eric Arthur Blair. Did you know George Orwell is a pen name? Big Brother really was watching him. In the novel, people can be arrested for thought crime or having rebellious thoughts. This has happened throughout history, too. Between 1881 and 1945, the Imperial Japanese Army had a unit that could arrest people for being unpatriotic, which inspired Orwell while writing the book. Today, many countries like Thailand, the Netherlands, Venezuela, and Poland have laws against insulting their heads of state. If that was true in the U.S., then, well, this podcast would be pretty controversial at times. Speaking of which, when Donald Trump became president, sales of 1984 spiked. The book was always popular. A lot of people read it in high school English class. But just days after Trump's inauguration in 2017, people were already returning to Orwell's age-old lessons about the difference between truth and lies. Trump's press secretary at the time, Sean Spicer, said that the crowd at his inauguration was the biggest in presidential history. Then, when asked about this on NBC's Meet the Press, Trump's senior counselor Kellyanne Conway said, don't be so dramatic, adding that Spicer just gave, quote, alternative facts. That's when 1984 shot to number one on Amazon's bestseller list, prompting the publisher Penguin to print 75,000 more copies. This represented a 9,500% rise in sales, Readers noted the similarity in Conway's language to the way that Orwell wrote about the corrupt government of Big Brother. In 1984, the word newspeak refers to language in which the ability to dissent has been eliminated. Throughout Trump's presidency, he constantly tweeted out deliberately false information to millions of followers, but Twitter didn't intervene until the final months of his term in office. For more on that, you can check out our May 26th episode. Other dystopian classics also rose in popularity upon Trump's inauguration, like Aldo Huxley's Brave New World and Philip K. Dick's The Man in the High Castle, which imagines what the world would be like if the Nazis won World War II. Many musicians have drawn inspiration from Orwell's novel. Radiohead opened their sixth album, Hail to the Thief, with a song called 2 Plus 2 Equals 5, a reference to 1984. In Arctic Monkey's first hit, I Bet You Look Good on the Dance Floor, Alex Turner repeats the refrain, dancing to electropop like a robot from 1984. There weren't robots in the book, but I mean, it's a pretty great lyric. David Bowie even wrote a song called 1984. He wanted to write an entirely musical interpretation of the novel, but Orwell's estate wouldn't budge on the rights there. Of course, there's the whole TV franchise, Big Brother, which has been running for over 20 years. 
In the show, a bunch of strangers live together, and they're all being recorded. What could go wrong? If you haven't read 1984, it's worth checking out. But then again, if you lived through the Trump presidency, you probably got the gist of it. Now, let's talk about music. Justin Nozuka is here to talk about his June 8th in 2011. All right, so it's 2011 on this day, and we're in Western Europe. I'm doing a tour without a tour manager for the first time. And we have to drive from Germany to Switzerland overnight to catch our show. And I decided I wanted to take co-pilot duties um, for this portion. So I get in the front seat and we're off. And I, I check out the hotel website and put the address in the GPS. Um, we finally get uh, there. We climbed up this mountain at like 5 a.m. in the morning. We get to the top and we realize we can't go into town with the car. No cars are allowed. So I call the hotel, realize I put the wrong address in. They have a second location. Luckily, it was only 45 minutes away. And, and so we had to climb down this mountain as the sun was coming up. It was absolutely gorgeous, but very stressful. And uh, we made it. So it all worked out. And that's my story of the day. And now for today's final segment, I'll be going back into my own photo archives to see what I was up to on a June 8th in my life. On June 8th, my brother graduated in 2019. I had just flown back from finishing my album and I progressed to dressing up and going to celebrate my brother graduating from high school. Uh, my brother and I are really close. I've talked to him about I've talked to about him on the podcast before, but we both live in Brooklyn together in New York and I'm really thankful to have my best friend also be my sibling. I cannot imagine living in a city like New York City without a family member being nearby. And he and I both have kept each other sane throughout the process of trying to move to a city that is across the country from where we grew up. Um, Oakland, California is very different. It's a lot smaller feeling than something like Brooklyn, New York. Um, but they have similar vibes. But I'm still very thankful to be able to live with one of my closest family members as we both try and navigate the pathways that we've chosen for ourselves. Thanks for going back in time with me and remember to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. You can come back tomorrow for more stories from the past. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff, no, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's 365.